and they have a circle of acquaintances. And the, the etiquette of dealing with these different circles is all different. Huh? This is culture. This is civilization. Uh, not that we're simply, you know, the same with everybody. That's like so low class. <laughs> And Americans in particular, and West Coast Americans especially, are guilty of this. Uh, they're very uh, shameless. Uh, what's that Spanish word? Sinvergüenza. Sinvergüenza. Means uh, without shame. Huh? Without shame. And it's, it's the closest equivalent to rascal. <laughs> So if somebody is a shameless rascal, we call them sin, sinvergüenza. <laughs> so uh, we don't like this. We don't like to see this because it means that a person does not have discrimination. And discrimination is the function of the intelligence. So the more intelligent a person is, the more we would expect that they treat different categories of people very differently. And they don't express their inner feelings to everyone. Uh, they don't wear their heart on their sleeve, as the saying goes. Huh? <laughs> but they keep it very confidentially. And uh, this is the sign of a civilized person. Okay, next one, excuse me, is related. Avahita. Avahita means concealment of emotions. To display emotions artificially in order to conceal one's true confidential feelings or emotions is called avadhita. The symptoms of avadhita are hiding the limbs which betray those emotions, looking elsewhere, futile action, and impaired speech. Well, we see women do this a lot. They do it a lot more than men. Women are very artful about hiding their emotions. Uh, so they'll often say um, things that they don't really mean. And the reason they do that is to hide what they really feel. Okay? Uh, the female psychology is described very uh, nicely in Srimad Bhagavatam. What is that in the third canto? Fourth canto. Fourth canto in the story of Puranja. King Puranja. <coughs> Take cover. King Puranjan is uh, the story of King Puranjan is one of the few allegories in the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Vedic scriptures in general. In fact, in all my research into the Vedas, I can only recall three or four instances of allegory. Mostly everything in the Vedas is history. Huh? Some people try to portray the Vedas as being uh, mythological. They're not mythological. They're, they're fact. They're history. Purana, Purana means history. So, excuse me. <coughs> Krishna. Anyway, <clears throat> these histories have been passed down from long, long, long time ago. So uh, when we read these things, they're fact. <laughs> but in the case of the story of Puranja, in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, this is an allegory. And it's an allegory of the relationship between the soul and the material body. And the soul is king. He's compared to a king named Puranjana. Pura, Anjana. It means... Uh, Pura means a city, and Anjana means limbs. Huh? So the city of limbs is, of course, the body. So he's the king of the city of the body, Puranjana Maharaj. <coughs> and the, uh, the body is represented as a woman. Huh? The life heirs of the body are like a woman who invites him to enjoy Come into this wonderful city of the body, and you can enjoy it as the king for a hundred years. But she doesn't say, oh, and then you have to get out. <laughs> that part is conveniently covered up. 
So Puranjan, <coughs> because he's lusty to enjoy, he accepts this position of the king of this body, the city of nine gates. Uh, the material body has nine openings, so it's called the city of nine gates. And then, after a hundred years of enjoyment, then the Yamadutas come, and they, they conquer the city, and they drag him out in chains, and they take him to Yamaraj for judgment. It's a really heavy story. But it's there in the fourth canto. And it is part of that description, there is a very uh, detailed description of the character of the materialistic female. So uh, everyone should read that and be aware of that. Smriti. Smriti bhava means remembrance. <clears throat> Recollection and love for some previously experienced object brought about by seeing a similar object or by constant practice is called smriti. The symptoms of smriti are moving the head and contracting the eyebrows. Mm. Okay, so smriti is actually something that we do all the time. Smriti is one of the nine processes of devotional service. Smaranam. Smaranam means to remember or remembering Krishna. Uh, and we do that, of course, every time we chant his holy name. But we find this bhava of smriti. Uh, like we were talking about this, when you're thinking later on about your performance of devotional service, huh? it's like when you're actually chanting the holy name, you have one feeling. And then later on, when you think about chanting the holy name, you have a different feeling. Huh? Sometimes it's actually sweeter to remember you're chanting the holy name. Because at the time of chanting the holy name, it's, there's so much going on. You know, if it's a kirtan, there's, you have to keep the bead and everything's happening very fast. And, you know, so many things to think about. But then later on, if you listen to a recording or something and then you think back on it, it has a very different flavor than the experience itself. I used to experience this um, when I was in Hawaii and I was chanting all the time. And so I would chant every day, you know, at least eight hours or ten hours. And then sometimes I would go to the store or do other errands or chores. And then during this time while I was, let's say, driving around or, you know, going to the store or something like that, I would think about when I was chanting. And it had this wonderful kind of nostalgic flavor to it. Of course, we all edit our memories. Huh? <laughs> we all embellish and, and uh, you know, repurpose and, and refine our memories uh, to suit our understanding of them. But still, uh, you, you find that this is a, a particular taste. This smirti taste is a little bit different. Uh, even if you, if you chant, for example, and then you think about it later, Hmm, I was chanting. Hmm. You know, it just has a different flavor. Huh? So that flavor, that bhava is called smriti. And finally, vitarka. Vitarka means deliberation or reasoning. The deliberation performed to determine the truth about something is called vitarka. This deliberation may be instigated either by doubt or curiosity to determine its cause. The symptoms of vitarka are contracting the eyebrows and moving the head and fingers. Huh? Hmm, well, first of all, we have this, and then we have that. And, uh, if we think about it, we could even say, that, da, 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 da. Huh? It's, it's natural to move the fingers. Because when you're exercising the, the uh, logical functions of the brain, these are equivalent to the fingers. Huh? So we naturally move the fingers when we're thinking about or reasoning about something like that. Uh, we find this especially when things happen that we don't understand. 
Oh, well, you know, why did that happen? Well, first of all, it was this, and then it was like that. And this happened, and maybe it was that. Huh? So everyone wants to understand their life. They want to understand the things that happened to them. So this, this mood of reasoning or explaining the causes of this is called Vitarka. Now, you see, we all experience these things. We all experience them in life all the time. Huh? Maybe not all the time, but we, at, at every moment we are experiencing some bhava, some mood, some feeling, some emotion. The problem is that in the material world, most of the time our emotions are in relation to some material thing. And it's comparatively rare, only when a person is engaged in devotional service, that 